Hello, I'm Ann Bowers with Accounting Assistance Team. I am a cloud accountant specializing in QuickBooks Online. I'm also a pro advisor and I help small business owners save time, gain insight and grow. And today, my friend Sherry Walker is joining me to do a quick demonstration. Sherry is also a fellow QuickBooks certified pro advisor and bookkeeping professional. Hi, Sherry. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for being my guinea pig today. Oh, you're welcome. I'm happy to do it. Uh, so one of the things we're going to do is, I don't know about you, but the last few months have been very challenging and, and, and difficult, you know, as far as like the bookkeeping and accounting world, trying to help our clients that are struggling, you know, to keep open their businesses. And a lot of things have become even more digital than they ever were before. So one of the reasons we're doing this video today is to try to help, you know, small business owners that are out there, their bookkeepers that are assisting them, um, you know, just trying to help you learn to be more digital and to get things done when you can't meet in person or things are closed or it's just difficult to hire people and, you know, not have them physically come in to the place of work to fill out paperwork. We're just trying to make it easier for people. So today we're going to do some real world, everyday life paperwork, but we're going to do it digitally and you get to see both sides of it. So Sherry, thank you, you know, for helping oh, yeah. me with this. <laughs> You're welcome. So as a, as an employer, um, or as uh, from the, even just from the employee side, there are certain forms that have to be filled out uh, before you start work. So, you know, the new hire packet, uh, and typically these forms include, you know, the form W-4, where you talk about what kind of withholdings you want, and then the form I-9, where you prove, you know, that you're able to work, uh, you know, legally in the United States. Um, we also have, depending on what state uh, you're operating in, there are also local tax forms. Uh, you may decide to have a direct deposit authorization form. All these things are going to be important for payroll, right? So whether you're the business owner entering all this stuff into your system yourself, or you have a pro advisor helping you uh, to enter in employee information, you have to have all this paperwork. You have to keep it on file. It's required. So what we'll do is go and start with the form W-4. So I'm going to share my screen and we're going to use Adobe DC to make this form fillable and then be able to digitally exchange it back and forth for a signature and a date. Um, and it's going to be so much faster than the typical way. So for example, right now, a lot of businesses are still doing paper based forms. I have tried to minimize my paper as much as possible over the last year, but occasionally you still have to print some things out things. Some things still have to be the original signature, all that stuff. But Adobe has allowed the ability to securely um, provide the ability to have people sign and date and exchange. It's all encrypted. It's completely safe. They have, luckily, they have the technology to take care of all that. And we don't have to worry about trying to finance something uh, up to that level. We just be, we're able to use the software and it saves us, you know, time and aggravation. So here's the typical scenario. And Sherry... <laughs> <laughs> Let me know if you see this all the time too. So you have all these forms. Let's just start with the form W-4. So the employee sits down with this packet of paper um, and they have to fill it all out, you know, name, address, social, uh, you know, whatever the withholdings are they want, and then they sign and date down at the bottom. Then they give the paperwork to their employer. Then the employer has to take the time to fill out their portion, you know, for the I-9 or for the residency certification or whatever paperwork you have, you know, in your area. And then the employer has to scan and somehow securely upload, you know, to their bookkeeping professional, or if they're doing it themselves, they have to somehow store these records, okay? So they might have, you know, some kind of a cloud, you know, software. So people use, you know, OneDrive, Box, of course, QuickBooks Online has its own area where you can have attachments and it just lives in your accounting system securely. So there's all kinds of ways to store documents, but how many people do you think are out there still doing paper? Probably way more than 
you want to think. <laughs> Nine times out of ten clients I go into, they are all paper based. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. And, you know, and not only does it take longer, but then they have to store it somewhere. You know, right. and no matter what, you need to at some point have it digitally stored just so it's faster to find. And it's, you know, I mean, let's face it, sometimes there's fires, sometimes there's water damage, sometimes absolutely. there's all kinds of situations that happen. You know, for a long time, businesses here were 100% closed, you know, during the, the first part of the pandemic. Well, how are you supposed to access your records when you shouldn't even be in your office? You know what I mean? Right. So if it's digitized, that makes it so much easier and safer to deal with. So an easier way than kind of the typical way would be to just digitize the forms, make them fillable, and then have a secure way to share them back and forth. So for example, a good real life use case would be the new hire paperwork. Just the other day, I was able to send paperwork back and forth to one of my client's new hires and the, I sent it in the morning and most of the forms they had sent back to me by the end of the day. And that is the fastest I have ever gotten back payroll paperwork to start entering into somebody's system. Usually what happens is the employee starts, they start filling out the paperwork, they never have it finished the first day of employment. I'm lucky if I get it a week later, there's already been a payroll processed. So now we're into week number two and they're like, oh my gosh, you have to get this employee in. They get, they got to get paid. Okay. Well, where's the new hire paperwork? Like I can't even enter them into the system. Right. Right. And then I get it and there's, they're expecting me to have it uploaded within like the very next day for the next payroll. Very stressful, <laughs> not efficient whatsoever. So the sooner, I can get back the payroll paperwork, the sooner I can get things rolling for the client, right? And then the employee Absolutely. gets paid. <laughs> Nobody yes. likes working for one or two or three weeks before they get paid, right? Right. So up for everybody. So what we're gonna do, I am going to share my screen. And honestly, it keeps the paper off of your desk. I mean, you, you get paper from here and you get paper from this employee and then you have the stack of papers and you're busy because your job is, you're just busy. And so it yep. sits, therefore you get no, nothing done for your next payroll. So this is amazing. It keeps it yep. in all together and easy to, easy to do. And don't forget about this too. How many times have you walked in to a place of business and you're with the owner in their office and there's, you can't even see the desk. Like there's so much paperwork and unopened mail. And now think about this. Now there's new hire paperwork sitting there with social security numbers and bank account information. And it's just sitting on their desk because they haven't had time to get to it. Right. And More times than not. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. And you're looking at it with horror, like, oh, that should be safeguarded. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but yes. we get it. Like small business owners wear many hats. There's not enough hours in the day. We get it. Stuff piles up. But here's a way to take care of it. And that's the takeaway. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to pause this real quick so I can share my screen. So here we have form W4. And it's the one nobody ever knows how to fill out. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. The most dreaded form of employment. It's confusing. They changed it. Nobody has any idea what to do. We're going to have another video on that later because I do feel like it's important to understand how to fill this out correctly. And the thing is, it's, it's so situation dependent. It's different for everybody. Nobody has the same tax picture. So, you know, that's, that's part of the, <laughs> the confusingness of it. But what we're going to do is um, make this a fillable form. And then Sherry is going to pretend to be the employee who is filling this form out. I'm going to pretend to be the employer who's sending it or the accountant who's sending it for payroll purposes. And then we're going to see how it all works on both sides. So the very first thing is you can see I went to the irs.gov website to pull the official form. They're always going to have the most updated version. And that way, you know, you're not going to some other false site that's gonna you know, put junk on your computer, just go straight to the source uh, for any of your you know, important forms. So we are going to download this form. And actually, I think what I'll do is I'm just gonna print to PDF. 
And you can see that this is the 2020 version of Form W-4. And then what I'm going to do, and now there's a couple different things we can do from here. So the first thing I'll do is from the side where I'm just opening up a PDF and then I'm using the software to edit it. And then for the next form that we experiment with, I will actually go from the Adobe DC side and open it up as a template and then fill it out from there. So there's a couple different ways to approach uh, making this form fillable and signable. So now what we'll do is I will go and find that file. And you'll see when I open it, because I have the Adobe DC software um, on my, you know, on my account, I'm able to automatically go in and do all kinds of uh, features. So what I want to do is make this a fillable and signable form. So I'm going to click here. And then uh, because this is a form that's going to need a signature and a date, I'm going to choose request signatures from others. And here is where you add in, okay, who is the new hire that needs to be receiving these different forms and filling them out? So, you know, again, Sherry, thank you for being my guinea pig here. We're going to go ahead and use your email. And then you can see I have an area to make a message. So I could say something to the effect of, you know, hello, Sherry, welcome to the team. Here's the first set of new hire paperwork that I need you to complete, sign, and then I'll get a notification that I've, you know, received the completed version from you. If you have any questions, if you have any problems, you know, please reach out. We'll, we'll have a Zoom and we'll work through it together. Whatever it is you want to say in this area, we'll just keep it simple and leave the default. You'll notice down here also, there is the option to add additional PDF forms that you want them to sign. Uh, right now, we're just gonna do one at a time, but you could have multiple ones here. Also, there are more options. I love it, you can digitalize the, the new hire paperwork. It's so cool. Exactly, yeah. because how many times do you go onto a site and they'll have the PDF and you wish you could just fill it out right there. You know, some of the IRS forms are fillable, some of them are not. And either way, you still have to create, you know, that special signature area uh, to get that captured. So no matter what kind of a shape the PDF is in, you can make it fillable and signable. So that's what I really like about this. It's gonna be such a time saver, you know, moving forward. So- Before you go, um, I uh, had a question for you that oh, I sure, think somebody- sure some other employers you might have. Mm -hmm. um, if you have the Adobe DC and your employee does not, will it still make it fillable? That's a good question. So yes, they don't have to have the software. They don't have to pay the subscription fee. You're already paying for it. So all they have to do on their side is just complete and sign. And you're already paying for the subscription, you know, as a part of your business expense. So that's already taken care of. They don't have to have anything installed. They just open it up and the software takes care of it from there. That's amazing. <laughs> Thought you'd like that. <laughs> and then here's something else I wanted to show you. So at the very top, it automatically goes to um, the very first person you list is going to be the signer, right? Now you can have multiple signers. So let's pretend that, uh, and we'll get to this when we start looking at the I-9, um, but if, you, if you're the only signer, then you go in the top line and that's it. And then if you want to copy anybody else in, then you can add them in just for informational purposes, but they are not the signer. So let's pretend you had to have you know, three people signing a form. The first person that has to sign goes on top then the second person, then the third person. So the order in, in which you list people is the order in which the signers have to do it. Now you can also choose the option right here to complete in any order. So, you know, participant B could sign before participant A or C or whatever. And eventually when they've all signed, it will come back to the sender. So that's, that's a nice option. That is awesome. 
So right now you're going to be the only signer on this form. So I'm going to leave that there. Also, let's pretend because this, this is a real life situation here. Let's pretend that you are the bookkeeping professional that is doing payroll services for a small business owner, right? So you are going to be the one sending it to the new hire. However, you also want to copy in the business owner so that they can see the progress and they can see that the new hire, you know, is completing the paperwork. And as the owner, they are informed. So their address would go here. That's a pretty cool function. Mm -hmm. And that way they can kind of keep on track and see what's happening along the way. And, you know, if there's like a, a sticking point or a roadblock or there's issues, they're part of the process to help. And then again, you can go ahead and put your message in here and you can see here is the one form we have attached. Also, you can password protect this. In our situation today, we don't need to do this, but it just, it adds an extra layer of security. So when you are doing forms like this, you could set a password um, and then the person would have to have that password. So you'd have to, you know, give that to them separately, call them on the phone, send them a text, whatever. And separately, the email would be arriving so that not just anyone can open this email because they don't have the password. This is one of my favorite features here that you can set a reminder. So let's say I send this to you today and it's tomorrow and you haven't even started the form or, you know, and, and I'm like, Ooh, I really need to get this in for payroll. So I can set a reminder for the system to bother you every single day. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. That's yeah. an awesome feature. There's so many times you need, instead of you having to keep going out and spending your time sending another email, can I have this? Can I have this? You just set it up and it just does it for you. <laughs> exactly. Huge time saver. So you can set it up for every single day. You could set it up for business days only. You could do every other day, every fifth day, you know, there's options here. So I like the every other day. If I have enough time, you know, to get this information back, if I'm kind of on a time crunch, it's going to be remind that person every day. And I'm probably going to be calling them also, you know, so <laughs> it just depends on, the, the time sensitivity more than anything else. And then we will go to the next. And you can see it's getting it ready to be fillable. It only takes a few seconds. Now I imagine it would be longer if it was multiple pages. And then here is a message on the upper left. This is an interesting feature. So let's say you don't want to take the time to go through each field and decide what part is fillable. You can choose this option so that the software does its best to kind of guesstimate which fields are fillable. And then you can always remove the ones you don't want to do. So just for fun, we're going to go ahead and enable that. So watch what happens to our PDF. Oh, and you know what else? I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Is that easier to see? Yes, absolutely. Okay, great. So watch what happens when we fill this in because right now nothing on this form is fillable, all right? Now you can see it's kind of doing its best to guess, but it didn't do 100% of a job here, but it's not bad. I mean, it, it's gonna save us some time. So, you know, these little radial buttons are, you know, here, the, uh, this field is here, this field here. And then we have other little like check boxes here. This one, it tagged that one correctly. It grabbed all these correctly. Okay, so it did a pretty good job. But look, this is blank and this is kind of an odd shape. <laughs> that's okay, we can fix any of this stuff. But at least that's extra fields we don't have to mess around with. Uh, so let's see here. And what we can also do, you'll like this, a lot of this is you know, you can manipulate the information to go where you need it to go and to be as big as you need it to be or as small. So I'll give you an example here. I don't need that block of information there, but I do need a fillable area here. So I just kind of moved it over and we're just going to put it right there. I'm going to change the size of it so it fits this field a lot better. And there we go. 
And then this one is also kind of a hmm, odd shape. And I'm just gonna drag the area that I do need. Some people have extremely long last names, so I'm gonna give that a nice big field. And then social security number. So the last time I did this with this form, it actually had little separate boxes for each digit of the social. And this time when it transferred over, it just made one big block. Either way, as long as we capture the number, that's what's important. Now you'll see this field didn't have any kind of you know, recognition that it was a field at all. So what we're gonna do now is go over to this right side. Now you'll notice that the advanced editing features are on, which gives us all of this, okay? So right now, you have already been designated as the signer. I can also pre-fill some information, or we can make parts of this where anyone who's being emailed this form can fill stuff in. I want this to be specific to you. So I'm gonna keep this under you as the signer. So we are going to go into this area here, and we have the ability to add more uh, fields, like add more boxes. So I need to have a text field over here for the address. So I'm just gonna drag that over here and then make it the right size. And then this field also needs to be adjusted. And I'm just dragging, I'm just clicking and holding and dragging and then letting go. There we go. So now all that area is fillable. Then you'll notice we've got the choices here for these buttons, okay? The rest of it looks like it, you know, clicked. Mm, that's kind of a big square here. And it really just needs to be the dollar amount area here. These fields are also kind of huge. Just gonna make them a little bit more in line with that area. So while you're doing that, if you don't use the quick function, you would need to add all of those fields by yourself, exactly. each one. Exactly. Yep. So let's pretend that, you know, you, you really only needed, let's pretend that there was a lot of fields, but all you really cared about was like five of them. It would be faster for you to just manually add the five than to do that and have 28 fields populate and then you have to go back through and remove them. So a lot of it also just depends on what you're trying to accomplish. All right, so that kind of cleans that up a little bit. And I'm not gonna bother to do, you know, super picky stuff on all this. Now let's just pretend I don't even want that field over here or this one. I'm just right clicking and deleting. Now there's a text field that I could use here. So I'm going to So I am going to maneuver some of these around a little bit here. Could you make a template of mm -hmm. this so you don't have to do it for every employee? Exactly. So see down here at the bottom, there's an option to save this as a template so that you're not having to recreate the wheel every single time you want to use this form. So you make it fillable one time. And of course, with a form like this, it's going to be the same fields over and over. And then you can make a template and that saves it into your Adobe template area of your you know, account. So then you can quickly just create something from a template later. And then you can use the same form over and over again. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That'd be a lot of a time saver. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Because you can see, depending on the form, it does take a little bit of time up front to get everything set up. But then once you save it as a template, then it's just a matter of, you know, who's the signer, how many people are getting this, you know, who has to approve. It's a whole lot faster on the other side of it once you've got everything set up. Okay, and then the rest of this is just instructions. Now, I like to start from the top of the form and then work my way down because you can further uh, edit these fields for specific purposes. So for example, first name and initial, if I right click and choose to edit, we have some more options for this form. So right now, who is this field assigned to? 
you the signer because this the whole purpose of this is to get your information and then this is text and I can make this required so you're not able to complete this form you have to fill out this form or it won't let you continue what a great function mm -hmm. and then let's see here you can also choose the color of the text by default it's black that makes sense and there's other options here oh so you can copy a field you can repeat the field on all pages uh, gotcha or delete mm -hmm. all right so now that's designated that you are required to fill out this field and then the same thing here i'm going to make that a required field for you as the signer and then i don't have to keep hitting cancel i can just go right to the next one and hit edit required and same thing as we go through the rest of these fields. Now, in this area, you have to answer one of these. However, if you make each one of them required, it's gonna to try to, you know, to fill in each one. So that's not what we want. So instead, we are just going to not make that required, but you still have the option of choosing one, and that's what we want. And I want to make sure that these are assigned to you because that's especially important if you have a form that there's more than one person. This definitely, you know, specifically tags it that you have to do it. All right, now we're just going to go through some more and just keep doing this, making these required fields for you. Actually, I won't make that required. I'll let you. I'll assign it to you, but I won't make it required because you may or may not, you know, as the new hire, have dependents. Remember back in the day on the, the old W-4, most people were like, oh, just put a zero or a one, you're fine. Well, then they changed it and you can't put a zero or a one anymore. Wow. Which, of course, just confused everyone even further. <laughs> The already hard one. <laughs> They're making it even harder. I forget exactly where it is on uh, on this form, but it, if you look up, like if you were to do a search for, you know, why did form W4 change? One of the things they specifically listed was to make it easier. <laughs> I love it. The irony in that. <laughs> Anyone who's filled this out can feel the pain. Okay, so here we are at the signature area. Now this is really important and this has specific options as well. Okay, so I'm calling out specifically that this is a signature field. And see by default, it's, it's required because it's really important and it's also assigned to you. I'm gonna hit okay. And then this is going to be a date field. So if it's not a date field already, this is where I can tell it to be a date field. So see, generically, it was just a text field. I do want this to be a date and you can pick the format. For government forms, I always use the full year, the four digits for the full year. You know, and or like if they have an example of how they want you to have the date, pick that format. Now here is the area where if I were preparing this for a client's new hire, I already know what their EIN is and what the company name is. And typically I would already know from the employer when is this new hire starting? So I would go ahead and fill these fields in myself before sending it to the new hire. So this would now become my field and I would pre-fill information so that nobody else has to even be bothered and take the time to do it because I've already taken care of it for them. And then what we can do is, I like to also do everything in capital 
That way it's a whole lot easier to read. See how it auto fills there? And it's also a different color so that nobody can change it. I've already taken care of it. It's done. There we go. So if I change it to me for pre-filling and then change it, here, I can go ahead and take care of that. So let's just say, and then that's pre-filled. And then again, I can take care of this ahead of time. All right, so there is our page one, fillable and assigned and pre-filled. Not too bad. And of course, depending on how many pages you're trying to prepare, of course, it might take longer or shorter. There may have just been one field, you know, on this one that we wanted to fill out. But this just gives you a good, like, everyday real life example of a form that you can use. So other choices here. You can do a participation stamp. You can have a transaction number assigned you know, to the different forms you have um, if you need to track that kind of a thing. You can, have, you can add a drop down. So like for example, we could throw a little box on our form where there are you know, three different drop down choices that they can select from. Or it could just be generic text. You could have check boxes. You could have the little radio buttons. Um, the signer information, you can add boxes for titles, emails, you know, dates, all that kind of stuff. And then, of course, for the, uh, the signature area, you can do a signature block, a signature stamp, you can do the, you know, initials. They have all kinds of choices here, which is great. I'm going to go ahead and save this as a template so they don't have to do all that again later. And now what's going to happen is, Sherry, when I click send, it's going to get it ready to send you this email and then we'll see what it looks like from your side. Sounds great. Adobe really has built in a lot of good features for employers. This is awesome. Well done, Adobe engineers. Well done. Oh, and here's one more part too. So it gives you a little warning and it says there are some fields on your form that you did not review. And it gives you a chance to see, oh, which one did I, did I skip over? Did I forget to take a look at one? So if you click on review, it highlights the ones that you didn't you know, make any custom settings, you know, that kind of a thing. So I do wanna make that a required field for the first name and middle initial, and I want the signer to have to fill that in. So see, it's a good thing it caught that because I thought I did that already, but apparently not. And then let's see if there is another one. So it looks like, see how this one has like a little dotted line around it? I believe that's another one that I did not edit before. And we are going to leave the default as not being checked yet. And I'm not gonna make it required because you know that, that might not apply. I don't wanna force you to have to check something that doesn't apply. And then let's see what else is kind of highlighted here. I think that's it. Let's try to hit send again and see what happens. Ah, so it, here's where we are saving it as the template. And of course you can call it whatever you want. So that looks good to me. And I will save the template and send you the notification. A pro advisor doing your books as well. This is something that they can keep and send to your employer. So it yes. keeps you from having to update all the time when a new form comes out because most pro advisors know when new forms come out and we read articles, we read, just keep up to date on the new, the new stuff from the IRS. So we're more than happy to keep up with this for you and sending it on your behalf. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. I mean, how many times have you had the situation where, 
you know, you've got an old form and it may or may not have the new fields that you have to have this information. And then there you are wasting time going back and saying, oh, I'm so sorry you filled out the old form. And they're like, wait, I did? I got to do another form? You know, so <laughs> being up to date on the current forms is very important. And you're right, as pro advisors, we do have to stay current. That's part of our job. We get all kinds of information all the time and it just, you know, helps us serve our clients better. So then nobody has to waste extra time on old forms. So I've seen time and time again where employers pull out this old form that they've had in their filing cabinet because they may have not had a new employee for a long time and it's years old. So this is great. <laughs> and they're using the same form that they just make a copy of it over and over again. And it's got like the little coffee stain down at the corner, you know, and they just use it over and over again. Yeah. No. It's been printed multiple times. So it's all black and you can't read most of it anyway. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Get get away from all that because it's just such such a big time waster. <laughs> this is so much more efficient. Um, you'll see here that the next step on my side is to kind of just, you know, give it an eyeball, go down here, and then confirm that this is the area, um, you know, down the bottom, like where there's special attention. So I'm just going to go ahead and click, you know, here. And now I'm going to send, and then we'll see what it looks like from your side, Sherry. That sounds good. Here is the confirmation that has, has been emailed for signature. So it says a copy has also been sent to me at accounting assistance team for my records. It has been sent to you as the signer. And it says, as soon as the agreement is complete, all eligible parties will be emailed PDF copies and reminders will be sent until completion every other day because that's what I had picked. All agreements that are not completed within 365 days will be automatically expired. I find that fascinating. That's a really long time. <laughs> but at least there's that option. And you'll notice up at the top it says the template was saved to my document library. So I'm able to use this over and over again. And you can see up here we had, I added the signers, I specified the fillable and signable areas, and now it has been sent, and now I can start tracking the progress. So Sherry, before we go to your side, I do wanna show one more thing on my side as part of the process okay. here. And don't forget, if you're the one doing the payroll for your people, make sure you're checking the IRS website regularly because they do update them all the time. <laughs> Here we are in my side of the account for Adobe DC. And if I refresh, we'll see that there is now one document in progress for today. And I filtered by today just so that you wouldn't see my other sensitive, uh, you know, client templates that I've already built. So now you can see that there is one form in progress and it is to Sherry and it is out for signature. And if I click on this, I can check the reminders, I can download the PDF, I can download the audit report and Sherry, you'll be excited that there's an audit report as a fellow bookkeeping professional. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice, right? So we can see once the process is all the way through, you know, the date it was started, who was the first person to sign it, when they signed it, when it came back, who was the next person, every step of the process is fully captured by this audit trail for the records. And I think that's really important. Every accountant, I think, would appreciate that, <laughs> the mm -hmm. audit trail. Absolutely. And if we go to the templates area, you can see there is my saved form W4 template that I can just use over and over again. That's really cool because you can have all your forms together and you don't have to go searching through your desk, looking for that pile of paper that's stapled together. That's your new employee form. So this is awesome. 
Yep. And so theoretically, I could have, you know, 20, 30, 40 templates here and just keep using them over and over again. And just they're right there. I don't have to do anything except open it up and start creating who's the next signer, who's the next person it's going to get, you know, because, hey, especially around the holidays, there's going to be a lot more hiring, even if it's just for, you know, temp employment, all that kind of stuff. So this is the time to get these templates ready. Let your pro advisor help you get these templates ready too. People, the pro advisors that are familiar with Adobe and the DC product that they have come out with. So um, make sure you ask your, your accounting people if they have this and if they're familiar with this. Right, because there's probably a lot of people that don't even know that this exists. It's been out for several years, but they just are like, oh, I don't want to learn one more thing. I've got so much stuff I have to keep up with already. I don't have time, you know, this and that. And, but yet at the same time, they're struggling to exchange paperwork. So you can be like, hey, listen, why don't we just start using, you know, this software and then it makes all of our lives easier. So sometimes you can be the one, you know, that brings it to your uh, accounting professional or, you know, the bookkeeper that's helping your business and say, hey, this, you know, watch some YouTube videos and <laughs> learn how to use some things. Because I don't know about you guys, but I learn a lot of stuff off of YouTube videos and, you know, accounting and bookkeeping seminars and online training classes and just my network of other professionals that I work with. We learn so much information collaborating with each other. So, you know, that's really important. If you don't already have this, start using it today because it is such a time saver, especially in a time when meetings are just not happening as much as they were before and people are not getting together as much as they were before. And, you know, we're all trying to stay healthy and, you know, this is a really good option for doing things digitally. So just keep it in mind. And also less paper, less paper on your desk, less paper in your filing cabinet. It just makes for a cleaner, more easy to run office. I agree. There's a lot to be said for being able to sit down at your workspace and not having piles of stressful things that you just haven't gotten to yet. I have literally gone into client offices and we have had to move stacks of paper onto the floor just to find the keyboard and mouse. I'm not even kidding. Unfortunately, that is a reality more than not. And it's really hard to get stuff done because you don't even have a place to set your laptop down and start working. <laughs> You'll be surprised how many people when you come in as a person that does digital as much as possible, how thankful they are because it's just less paper they have to have. And it, I think it really, with the day and age that we live in that's digital, this is what we're going to. And so the fact that we're already there and ready to, to go and keep you organized, I think it says stuff in itself. It's, it, it pays for itself in time. I mean, really. Yeah, yeah. I agreed. Absolutely. It's worth it. Some people are so afraid to, you know, pay for one more subscription or one more software package or one more thing, you know, some things are worth it. And for me, and I know for you, this is huge with just getting things done efficiently, you know, saving ink, saving paper, saving clutter, saving stress, saving time. So, you know, and by uh, purchasing this as well, you save, like you said, you save on paper, you save on ink. So those expenses that you no longer have can go toward this subscription that you can keep and be organized. So I think it, it all really works itself out and you may end up coming out ahead because toner and cartridges, they're expensive. So this is pretty cool alternative. Yeah, I know just for our business alone, we used to, you know, go to Sam's Club or order off of Amazon, like a case of paper at a time, you know, with several reams of paper in it. Now, I get like one little pack of paper at a time and it lasts for months because I do so much stuff digitally. So that saves me having to go pick up the case of paper or having to buy the case of paper and, you know, having to store the case of paper. It, it's just, it's, <laughs> it's a win-win like all the way around. And the money that we're saving 
by not using so much ink and paper can be put toward other business expenses or more profit, you know, for the owner. Yes, so, absolutely. Yeah, like, do I want to buy paper or do I want to do something amazing for my family? You know, it adds up. Okay, so here's the email I've received from Anne from Accounting Assistance. So all you do is you review and sign. And Sherry, you don't have an Adobe DC account and you're not paying for any software and you were able to go right in because I have the software subscription. That's correct. That's correct. So this is definitely multifunction, whoever you're sending stuff to, not just employees, but anybody that you need paperwork signed. Um, contracts, all, I mean, this is amazing. Adobe has really done a good job about making this very user-friendly, very just any way you need your business, it's it's pretty user friendly. Yep. So let me increase it so you can see it here. How is that, Anne? One more. One more. Okay. Perfect. That way All people right. can see it easier on the video. Okay. Basically, you're just starting from the upper left where it shows you to begin, and we're just going to completely make up just fictional, you know, new hire. This is not a real person, just for demonstration purposes. Correct. So I'm just gonna use Jane Doe. Mm -hmm. And then right here on the social security number, I will just type in yep. numbers. Yep. All right. And address. We'll just call it template Arizona. <laughs> All right. So as she talked about, when you able to click, you can click these, but you don't have to click all of them. And as you notice, as you're going down there as well, this little next is following you along. So that's pretty cool. It kind of gives you an idea where you need to be at. So exactly. All right. Also scrolling down. I mean, you just click. Put your personal information. Are you single or married filing separately? Are you married or are you head of household? Mm -hmm. And IRS also has more information on those definitions of if you're exactly. not for sure of their legal definition of each of these. Yep, because for tax purposes, you know, the definition could be completely different than just everyday life purposes. Correct, correct. And so as you can tell here, you can click on or click off if this applies to you. And then you'll scroll down a little, a little more. So depending on your income of which one applies to you, just hitting in information. Um, so multiplying the number of qualifying children, how many children do you have that are un under the age of 17? So say you have one child and under the age of 17, you will put $2,000 right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you're going to multiply the number of your dependents by 500. So if you have one child, you will add 500 right here. Yep, and get with your tax accountant if you're not sure how to fill this out. And again, we will have another video on the W-4 specifically, um, but this is just, you know, for experimental purposes today. Right. So it kind of goes along with this um, other income, not from jobs. If you want taxes withheld, any deductions, if you have any claim deductions filling out here. Um, uh, let's see. Yep, and anything that doesn't apply, you can just skip over. Right, you don't have to add zero, right? just skip over. Yep. If you have any extra withholding that you want to take out. Yep. Um, like some people like to have an extra 25 bucks withheld from their checks. Right. You know, you know, for whatever reason, like they, they've gotten together with their tax accountant and they've decided that was a good idea. So that's where you would put the extra withholding. Correct. So, and that's all. And so here mm -hmm. you want to sign it. So type your signature. Now notice Sherry up at the top there, you've got different options yes. for how to do the signature. We're going to have fun and we're going to do the typing and the drawing. So whichever right. one you want to do first. Okay, let's do the type since I'm already here. Mm -hmm. 
So we'll do Jane Doe. So, so that's, that's pretty cool. That's easy, right? Yes. Or if you have your own signature where you can do it. If you're really good with the mouse, <laughs> you can. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. And then, and then also, like, mm -hmm. let's pretend that you had your signature already stored as like a little right. PDF or like a little, you know, picture and image. That's where you can pull it onto there. Or yes. if you've got, if you're doing this on a mobile device, then right. you can just use, you know, your finger to just digitally sign. But right. I think, I think most people are probably going to do the typed or the drawn, you know, Correct. versions. <laughs> yes. So then you apply mm -hmm. and look, see where it is right here. Mm -hmm. Nice. And that's how it shows the date that you've signed it. And then behind the scenes, the Adobe software is capturing the fact that you are doing this. So, you know, like if there was ever a situation where you had to prove, you would pull up that audit trail and literally it's capturing your IP address right now. Like specifically, it went to your email, you are completing this on your computer and it's capturing that. So that's, you know, extra security that it's really you yes. signing this document, even though you're just typing a signature or using your mouse to sign, it still counts. Yes. Yeah, so if you're ever in a legal situation, you have proof that that employee signed this paper. Yep. So now, of course your lawyer would handle any kind of a legal situation. We are looking at it from the bookkeeping and accounting, you know, perspective. So, which in the audit trail is important for us too, uh, to be able to prove, you know, who signed what, when, and just have right. that as the, the employee record. Right. And if you hand an employee this paper and they take it home and sign it, you can't guarantee that they're the ones who signed it. So this is just more security for you. Yeah, because they are certifying that it is them completing this paperwork by doing this process. Agreed. Agreed. Yep. All right. I have completed what I feel is accurate and and up to date. Yep. Um, and then go ahead and click to sign down there at the bottom. All right. And then this completes the document. Now, if you had missed a field that was required, it wouldn't let you do that. It would force you to go back, fill out all the required fields, and then you'd be able to finish it. But, you know, we tried to make it simple and not have too many things required. Mm -hmm. So let's see here. You are all set. You finished signing the form. We will email the final agreement to all parties. You can also download a copy that you just signed for yourself. So that's nice, right? It's finished. Right. I have a notification that we'll take a look at next. You can capture the PDF, you know, for your side if you wanted to, or just leave it, you know, for the employer, or for the bookkeeper, you know, to capture the finished version. Honestly, most people are going to be like, I'm done. I'm good. You've right. got it. <laughs> I don't care about it anymore. <laughs> but there's also those few people that, would be happy to have that downloaded copy to remember what they even put on there. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Good point. Because yeah, at tax time, how often do people get asked, well, what did you put on your W4? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't remember what I put on that. Well, there you go. Then you have your copy to bring to your tax right. account because, hey, let's face it, you may have to change your withholding come tax time and you figure out that you may or may not have, you know, had enough withheld. So <laughs> that's correct. The very next correct. thing they ask is, well, what'd you put on your W4? I have no idea. <laughs> now you can. Okay. So oh. here is uh, my email again. It showed that I signed the 2020 form and you're done. You can open the agreement and see it. It emails it, your copy to you. And it just shows that you're done signing. So your part is done. So Anne's going to take over and show you what it looks like on the employer side or the accountant, whoever sends it, um, what it looks like. Here we are back on my screen and you can see in the completed area that the signer, Sherry, has finished her side of it. And now it's come back to me as completed. And if we take a look, I can open the form. I'll go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. Too big. And then you can see the completed form. So the upper area has been filled out, that other area, you know, and, and yes, I realize we did not fill that in here, but that's okay. <laughs> it's just for like experimental purposes. The important part 
is that the required areas are filled in and the signature and the date have been captured. So now I, I have viewed the completed document. I can download the PDF. I can um, share the completed agreement. You know, like if there was another, you know, authorized party that needed to have a copy of this. Um, and I'm going to download the audit report so we can have a look at that. That's really cool to have it when you have this paperwork, putting it with that. Exactly. So you always have the audit of everything that happened with this W-4. Yeah, that's important. That's so cool how it shows the history of everything that has happened from the beginning of the time that you sent it to everything who emailed it, who viewed it, who signed it. That is, it's really cool and that it shows it's complete. So now we're on the part where we're going to look at the form I-9 because that's a real life example of a form where it's going to require two people to sign off. And typically this is going to be the new hire and the employer. So we're just going to quickly go through this form. Uh, and again, I'm pulling it directly from the, uh, you know, .gov website so that it's the most up-to-date and official form because that's the safest way to do it. And I'm just going to print to PDF. And this time, from within my software, I'm going to open up the document. And now if we go to the template area, this is how we can kind of get into a fillable form the other way. So you can either open up the PDF and it automatically triggers the software, or you can be in the software already and then open up the PDF. So we are going to create a PDF template with that PDF I just pulled off of the .gov website and we're going to call it form I-9 and then we are going to add that file and preview and add the fields. And then this time I am not going to choose the option to fill in all 34 potential fields. I'm just going to manually select just the ones I want to be required and fillable. Now in real life, I would fill out this entire form, you know, with every field, but for this demonstration, we're just going to show the fact that two people can sign this and have it be returned and completed. So we are going to go down and I'm going to enter in the fact that it's going to be the both of us. So participant number one is going to be the first signer. And just for fun, we will put in one required text box here going to make that required. So participant one, and it's going to be text input and required. And then let's just pretend we have all the rest of these fields, you know, fillable and required. Here's the area where you would require the signature from the new hire. And then also a date. And then this should be required by default because we've already told the system it's a signature. So participant one. And then we will choose the format that is required. And then the second signer is going to be the employer. So once they've verified the information, then we are gonna switch it over to the next person that needs to sign.
And then we're going to save this template. You've successfully created your template for form I-9. Then I can send this template out for signature. I can continue creating other templates or I can go into my manage template area. So we're going to actually send this out for signature. And again, and it remembers from last time. And then participant number two, I'll pretend to be the employer in this example. Now we don't have another party that's just going to get copied in on this, but typically, you know, if it was the new hire and then the employer and then the accountant was the final recipient, um, there could be like another person that may be authorized to get this. Uh, but at the end of the day, it goes back, you know, completed to the sender. And then here we can leave our message. We can set the reminder. I'll not choose that option this time. And then we can have our message, add files, uh, the different, different options that we saw before. And we'll just go next. And here we can see that Sherry is the first person on the list that's going to get this to sign. And then I will be the second person. So if we go into here, it gives you the option to add anything that you may have missed the first time which I think is nice. And we're gonna go ahead and just quickly review both of those areas. Okay, both those areas look good to go. We're gonna go ahead and send. Here we can see that the form is in progress and I can open it, I can download it, or I can just wait for the process to be completed. So Sherry, now it's your turn. All right, here's my side. Uh, I received the email for my signature. So I'll click on that. I'll hit review and sign like I did last time. And right here, it shows me what I need to add. So, and then click to sign. So same here, do you wanna type it or draw it? Since we typed last time, let's get the draw feature. Nice, I like it. All right, and we're gonna apply. Oh, you gotta enter your name below. All right, and then just like last time, you click on click to sign. All right, and you're all set on this side. And then back on my side, it's my turn to sign form I-9. So I will open this up. Click here to review and sign. Make this a little bit bigger. And you'll see the little yellow arrow is telling me, keep going to the next area. Aha, and then there it is. And I'll just do the typed version right now. I'm gonna apply and it already has today's date filled in. I'll click to sign. All it's right. good that it gives you the arrows so you know where you're signing at. Especially when there's multiple people involved. Yeah, because you'll be like, woo, where do I even begin? So at least that way you're like, oh, I, I have to keep going. I have to keep scrolling down. So if I go back to the completed area, now I can see that the form I-9 is done. I can open it and see both of our sides. And then again, just like before, I can download this along with the audit trail and you know save this for the records and for entering into the payroll system. And I also wanna to add to that, I also received an email after all the parties involved had signed showing that it was signed and sending you your final agreement that everything was signed, so. Exactly, so you can kind of see like it, it came full circle. Yeah, so that's it. Now we can see how we can save some time, save some aggravation, exchange forms digitally back and forth. Uh, much easier, much faster process than having to do all the paperwork by hand. 
Um, hope you enjoyed the training. Sherry, thank you again for joining me. Thank you for having me um, and showing me all of this. Honestly, it gave me a whole new appreciation for Adobe and what products they actually do have out there. So, Yep, and we'll probably have some more videos uh, as well because like I said before, we're just scratching the surface with some of the digital capabilities that the Adobe DC software can do. So for you know our bookkeeping and accounting purposes, we have a lot of real life everyday use cases where this will be beneficial to us, but I'm sure there are other functions that we don't even know about yet that would be helpful for just business use in general. Absolutely. And if you want to get a hold of either myself or Sherry, at the end of this, we will have our contact information. So if you are in need of a QuickBooks Pro Advisor, please feel free to reach out to either one of us and we can help you and your business. Thanks everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye.